in this lesson, we're bringing the parallel and perpendicular lines conversation into the coordinate plane. And we're talking about something that you've seen before. You've seen slope in Algebra 1. And for example, in the diagram on the right top of your screen, you see segment AB. And you see that they have calculated the rise of AB to be 4. Notice that's 1 minus negative 3. They subtracted the y-coordinates, and they calculated the run from a to b. So they did 4 minus negative 4, they subtracted the x-coordinates in the same order, and then they calculated the rise over run to be 4 over 8, so the slope of segment AB is 1 half. So in part A, we're asked to graph the equation of those two lines, now, myself personally, before I graph this first one, I'm going to distribute the two so that it is in y equals mx plus b form. So I have y equals 2x plus 2. And since I wrote that equation in blue, I'll go ahead and graph it in blue. So you heard me mention y equals mx plus b. And again, that's something that you saw in Algebra 1 last year. Let me refresh your memory. m is slope and B is your y-intercept. And since the y-intercept can be thought of as a point, whereas slope can be thought of as a, mm, not quite a direction, but it's definitely not a point, um, we're going to start with the point. And the point in this blue equation that I've written is 2. So I'm going to plot 2 on the y-axis. And since my slope is 2, I can think of that slope as being 2 over 1, which means that from that point, I'm going to rise 2 and then run 1 to get to another point on my line. And I really only need two points in order to make a line. You might feel more comfortable having more than that. But here's that line. I'll graph this equation in red, its y-intercept is negative 3, its slope is also 2, so I can think of that as being 2 over 1, so from that y-intercept of negative 3, I rise to run 1, and again, I only need two points in order to make a line, but if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can have more than that. And so this is that line. And in part B, it's asking, what do we notice about the graphs of the two lines? Well, I hope that you'd notice that they're parallel. They're asking us, what do we notice about the slopes of the lines? They are equal. Interesting. Here, they have given us the graphs of these two lines, x plus 3, y equals 22, and y equals 3x minus 14. And they're asking us in part C to use a protractor to measure the angle formed by the intersection of the lines. And when I go to measure this angle, notice that here I have my 0, and what's the other side going through? It's going through 90. And so the measure of the angle formed by the intersection of the lines is 90 degrees. And what does that tell us about the lines? The lines are perpendicular. And what are the slopes of the two lines? Well, the slope of this line is right here staring at us. It's 3. The slope of the other line, some of you may feel more comfortable taking that equation and solving it for y in order to find its slope. So in order to do that, we subtract x from both sides and get 3y equal to negative x plus 22. And when I divide both sides of the equation by 3, I find that y equals negative one-third x plus 22 over 3. So the slopes of the two lines are 3 and negative 
one third, their relationship is that they are opposite reciprocals. So we complete the statements if two non vertical lines are parallel then they have equal slopes. If two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is, well, let's look back at this 3n negative 1 third. If I were to multiply those two things together, it would be negative 1. So in the first reflect example, it says your friend says that if two lines have opposite slopes, they are perpendicular. And he uses slopes 1 and negative 1 as examples. Do we agree with our friend? Well, 1 and negative 1 are, it's kind of a bad example because 1 over 1 and negative 1 over 1 are in fact opposite reciprocals, but they are also opposites. No, we don't agree with the friend because, for example, 2 and negative 2 are opposites. But their product is not negative 1. And so the lines are not reciprocal. In the reflect question 2, it says the frets on a guitar are all perpendicular to one of the strings. Explain why the frets must be parallel to each other. Well, if we think about it, if these are all our frets, and they're all perpendicular to one of the strings, then the frets must be parallel to each other by, we could say, the corresponding angles theorem. So now we're putting this into action. We're writing the equation of a line parallel to a given line passing through a given point. So in part A, they go through the whole process for you. So in the first sentence, we see that the line parallel, we are trying to write the equation of the line parallel to y equals 5x plus 1, and we want it to pass through negative 1 comma 2. And since parallel lines have equal slopes, we know that the slope of the required line, the equation that we're going to write, will be 5 as well. Now they're saying to use point-slope form, and we're going to use point-slope form when I do part B, but I will also show you another way to do it that some of you might prefer. So we substitute in the slope. Notice they substituted it in the 5 here. They substituted in x1, y1, which is this point. And then they simplified the equation, and then they got y by itself. So the equation of the line is y equals 5x plus 7. In part b, I want to write the equation of a line parallel to y equals negative 3x plus 4 that passes through 9 comma negative 6. Since parallel lines have equal slopes, the slope of the required line will be negative 3. So we use point-slope form and we substitute in the slope and the x1, y1. The slope goes here. The x1, y1 is here and here, going from this point. In the next step, they simplified that y minus negative 6 to be y plus 6, and they distribute the negative 3 so that we have negative 3x plus 27, and then when we get y by itself, we have negative 3x plus 21, 
So the equation of the line is y equals negative 3x plus 21. But I said I'd show you a different way. Some of you might not be familiar with this form of an equation. And y equals mx plus b is like your algebraic Bible. Well, you know that the slope of the line will be negative 3, so I know my equation is going to be y equals negative 3x plus b, but I don't know what my b is. Just how I can take that 9 comma negative 6 and plug it in for x1, y1, I can similarly plug it in for x and y. So that would be negative 6 equal to negative 3 times 9 plus b. And then I solve for my b. This is negative 6 equal to negative 27 plus b. And when I add 27 to both sides, I find that b is 21. And so now I know what my b is. I already knew what my m was. Now I can write my equation as y equals negative 3x plus 21, which is the exact same equation that I had here. It's just a different way of coming up with the same answer. Whichever process makes more sense to you, use it. In this Reflect Question 3, they're asking what is the equation of a line through a given point and parallel to the x-axis. Well, the x-axis is horizontal, so I need a line that is horizontal passing through a given point. Well, we've talked before about how a horizontal line would be y equals a number. Okay, so I know it would be y equals the y coordinate of the point. In these your turn examples, we're being asked to write the equation of each line in slope-intercept form. I'll do one the book's way and the other the other way that I showed you. Okay, so I'll do number four in the book's way. All right, so I know that my slope will be negative one, and I take this negative one and the five comma two point five and plug it into the point slope form of an equation. So I would have y minus two point five equals negative 1 times x minus 5. And then I simplify the equation by distributing the negative 1. I have y minus 2.5 equals negative x plus 5. And when I add the 2.5 to both sides, I have that y equals negative x plus 7.5. next example, I said I'd show you this problem in the other method that I had discussed previously. I know that my slope will be 3 halves. So y equals 3 halves x plus b, but I don't know what my b is, so I'm going to take this and plug it into x and y, and that will give me 0 equal to 3 halves times negative 4. I'm going to put it over 1 just to make things a little bit easier in the next step. Plus b. Remember that you multiply fractions straight across the top and straight across the bottom, so that means I have 0 equal to negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So finally, my b value is 6. So now that I know what my b is, and I already knew what my m was, I can write my equation as y equals 3 halves x plus 6. Here we're taking that same process and applying it to perpendicular lines. So I'm trying to find the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 4x minus 2 and passing through 3 comma negative 1. Since perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, 
That means the slope of our required line will be negative 1 over 4, the opposite reciprocal of 4, the slope of the line they gave us. And then from there, the process is exactly the same. They're plugging in the 3 comma negative 1 in for x1 and y1 respectively. They're plugging in the negative 1 fourth for x, simplifying, and then solving for y. We will do the exact same thing in part b. In part b, the equation of the line given to me is negative 2 fifths x. It says the product of the slopes of perpendicular lines is negative 1, so the slope of my required line will be 5 over 2, the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the line given to me. I'm going to take that negative 6, negative 8, and plug it in for x1 and y1. So I'll have y minus negative 8 equal to 5 halves times x minus negative 6. They simplified the y minus negative 8 to become y plus 8. We're going to distribute that 5 halves. So we get 5 halves x. And 5 halves times 6 over 1 would be 5 times 6 over 2 times 1. So that's 30 over 2, which is 15. And that means that when I subtract the 8 from both sides, y equals 5 halves x plus 7. So the equation of the line is y equals 5 halves x plus 7. This example is just like the last one on the previous screen. I will do it in the other method that I have shown you, just in case that's a method you want to see one more time. The slope of our required line will be negative 2 thirds. So I could start with y equals negative 2 thirds x plus b, and then take the 3 comma negative 1 and plug that in for x and y. I get negative 1 equal to negative 2 thirds times, I'm going to put that 3 over 1, plus b. So I have negative 1 equal to negative 2 plus b. And when I add 2 to both sides, b is 1. And now that I know what my b is, I already knew what my m was, my equation is y equals negative two-thirds x plus one. Take a moment and work through the your turn below.